Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a super heavy duty, super portable storage solution for all your small parts, nuts and bolts, that kind of thing. And I'm going to be using these totes as a base for everything that I'm making. Super sweet intro! This is my current storage solution. Uh, I've used it for quite a few years. Um, hasn't been too bad. It's just not portable. The bins are pretty flimsy. They always seem to be falling apart. Uh, they never quite fit everything I need them to. So all around I've wanted to replace it for a long time. And I looked in, around quite a bit to see what I could find to replace it. And then I ended up settling on the Stanley totes instead. I decided to go with the Stanley totes for two reasons. First reason being there's two sizes. There's the larger size and then the smaller size here. I'm going to link both of these in the description at the bottom if you'd like to purchase them. Also because each of these little bins comes out so if you have to replace them or change them around you can pull each of these out. So it makes it super modular, super easy to change and then you can also label the individual bins too. So I did that with just regular label maker. Seems to work pretty well. Um, I chose these over some of the other brands just because they seem a lot heavier duty. Uh, Harbor Freight actually makes almost the same exact sizes. They just didn't seem quite as heavy duty and I hate replacing stuff. So I opted to spend a little bit more money and get something I knew that was going to last for a while. After figuring out what I had to do for the bin situation, what bins I was going to go with, I then had to figure out the rack system that was going to hold all of them. Um, I thought about a lot of different ways to do it. I thought about possible like drawer slides, um, and that ended up just being more complicated than it needed to be. So I decided on a, a, a rectangular rack system where the toes would just slide in and out of. So after that, I had to figure out what kind of space I was going to be able to use. So I came up with uh, 81 and 5 8 inches. That would be enough that I could fit underneath all the storage shelves I plan to build eventually. That's just a temporary one, but they're all going to be about that high up. So if I, as long as I made the whole rack system 81 and 5 8 I'd be able to fit a good amount of totes and it still would be underneath where the racks are going to go. That also gave me the enough space to be able to put nine of each size totes. So that should be plenty. And next step is going to be to cut four of those. Whenever doing a project, I usually like to start with the base. So in this case, it was setting up the legs. Um, some people would use casters on this. I don't plan on moving this too much, so I'm just going to make um, some rubber legs out of hockey pucks here. I like to use these because they're cheap. Um, I bought a whole box of 30, I think, for like $20 or something crazy. So I'm going to use those, some 4-inch by 5 8 lag bolts, 5 8 washers, and then it's gonna end up being eight total 5 8 nuts. Uh, four of them I'm gonna to have to cut down to fit inside the, the box tubing I'm using. And I'll show you that in the next step. For this particular project, I'm using one by one 60,000 wall box tubing and to get the nuts to fit inside there's to mount the legs I started with this kind of nut uh, 5 8 and then ground down the sides on my grinder to get to the point where it would fit inside the tubing so after grinding two points down and then two sides it fits in there it's hard to see on the camera but the little coke sand goes in pretty easily Now you need to take the pieces that you cut earlier and drill four holes in each end so you'll have a place to tack weld the nuts once you slide them in. So on each side, at the very bottom of each of those tubes, drill four holes, slide the nut in, make sure it's flush with the end, and then once it is, you just tack weld it in place.
At this point we're going to make the mounting pads um, that are going to support the whole structure itself. So to do that I always like to use hockey pucks. Uh, this is just going to keep the uh, whole thing secure. They're kind of hard but at the same time it's, it's going to keep it from slipping around. So take some hockey pucks, get yourself some carriage bolts. The size really doesn't matter. Um, I use 5 eighths just because that's what I had laying around and also the 5 eighths nuts are what I have welded in the bottom of the, the stand. So get all that together. You're going to mark the centers on your hockey pucks. Then you're going to use a Forstner bit to drill down just deep enough to cover this head. This is actually going to be on the bottom, but you're going to need to cover that. So when it sits down, um, only the hockey puck will be touching the floor. This won't be touching the floor at all. After you drill them up to size, this is what they're going to look like. So 5 eighths hole in the middle in my case, and then um, inch in 3 eighths I believe, um, exterior. Yeah, I purposely left this hole a little bit snug because once you tighten these down into it, this part will grab into it so I'll be able to tighten everything and it should stay pretty secure. Yep, so that will pull down once I tighten this. Once you have everything drilled out, you can go ahead and assemble it all. This is what you're going to end up with. So, putting this up through the bottom, you can see there, once you tighten this down, this is going to pull the, the carriage bolt part up into the rubber so it won't spin it all on you and it will make a nice, um, good fit in there. So this is what you're left with. This is what you'd normally spend quite a bit of money on if you ordered them on Amazon or somewhere else. Uh, this is a really cheap, easy way to do it. And I think a box of like 50 hockey pucks was I think I only paid $30 for. So real cheap way to do it. You can get all your equipment mounted, level, super easy. At this point, you're going to cut 36, 13 and a half inch um, box tubing rails. These are gonna be the rails that the drawers sit on inside the frame that you're building. Now that you've cut all the rails, you're going to start attaching them. The first one that goes on the bottom is going to go on one side of your rails. And this is so that when you assemble everything and put your feet on, that you'll be able to slide the bottom drawer in. After you have the basic framing laid out, now you're going to need to lay out the each individual drawer slides for all the different compartments. Uh, to make this easy, I just came up with a spacer plate made out of wood, which is four and three eighths. So that's for the bigger size um, tubs that go in there. So made that just to save a little bit of time. I just slip it in there, clamp everything down, and it keeps everything square and I don't have to keep measuring everything. So that seemed the best um, solution to the problem. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the smaller drawers too. 
Now it's time to weld all of them up. Okay, so now you got all the big sliders welded in for the larger totes. Now it's time to cut a piece of wood to make a spacer for the smaller totes. You're going to want to cut that to 2 and 3 eighths and then install it like this and then you're just going to want to go and clamp all these down when you weld them just to make sure everything stays flat. And you're going to do that for the rest of them. After you finish welding all the small sliders in, it's going to look like this. So total you're going to have 18 slots with a little bit of space left on the top and nine of them are going to be for the smaller totes, nine of them are going to be for the larger totes. Okay, so the next step is going to be making the top of the cart. So these two pieces on the sides are just going to be your normal 13 and a half sliders. These pieces here are going to be 14 and 5 eighths front and back and that's going to set your width for your totes. And I set this pretty close so that when they go in they don't get cockeyed or anything, they go in straight. So that's going to be the most critical measurement, so make sure you cut those accordingly. After review of welded the top piece together, you're, need, you're going to need to weld it to the top of the at least one of the sides to start with. So you can see here it's welded to the top of one of the sides of the cart. And then on the bottom, since you already started your spacing down there, you're going to need to weld um, the two other cross pieces directly to the first rail on the bottom. You can see I've done that here. I'm also going to do some in the middle too, but that will probably be later on once I get the whole other piece of the cart welded onto the top of this one and you're actually looking at the side of it right now. Now it is time to complete the most crucial part of the whole build. This is going to be attaching the two sides. As you can see here, I'm just doing um, six cross pieces total. This is the, the most crucial measurement of the whole build because if you do these too close together, your drawers won't fit. If you do them too far apart, your drawers will fall out and go in all crazy. So make sure you take your time, measure exactly, double check everything before you final weld it. And I would do at least six cross pieces total. So take your time in the spot and it should go fine. Now that you have both sides attached, you'll need to add one piece to each of the three sides, both sides and then the rear. This is gonna keep the box, um, the totes from sliding out the sides or getting cockeyed when they go in. And then the one in the rear is gonna be what stops them from going all the way out the back once you put them in there. So for this I used half inch by half inch box tubing, uh, 60 thousandths wall also. You could use pretty much any size, I just use this because it's a lot lighter than the inch by inch. So I'm gonna get those welded on then I'll show you what's gonna happen after that. After finishing up both sides, you're going to have to do some kind of stop in the back. So I ended up doing two pieces of half inch by half inch box tubing. This is going to keep the drawer from sliding past the, the back of the, the whole thing. So unfortunately I didn't have the long enough pieces to go all the way from top to bottom. So I'm doing four pieces total and just joining them in the middle. But this should keep the drawer securely in there. and. When I have everything closed up, um, it should keep everything from falling out. Okay, that was a ton of welding. Next step is we're going to be prepping, priming, and painting the rack. This is probably my least favorite part of the whole process, but it makes it look a lot better. Plus, it's going to keep all those little rusty fingerprints off of it in the future. So, it's worth it. It's just going to be a pain to do. Stay tuned. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video of actually priming and painting this, just the prep work. So this is where we are now. This is the uh, final assembly. Uh, you can see the pads I made earlier with the hockey pucks. Those are super important because as you can see, they're quite different as far as the adjustment. Uh, this is because my garage floor is pretty unlevel, probably like most of yours. So this ended up being super important. It worked really, really well. I have probably three inches of adjustment if I ever need it, which I shouldn't, but it's good to have it. See, it all came together pretty well. Um, the way I, I measured everything out, you can see the drawers sit slightly less than flush, so if I ever put a, a door on this, I'll have plenty of room to be able to close it and everything. You can see the thread checker. It's just mounted with two screws with quarter 20 weld nuts mounted right into the frame. I'm still waiting on all the top totes to go in. Right now I just have the bottom ones. The top ones are all gonna be 
this size right here. So all the bottom ones I sell at Home Depot, the smaller top ones I had to order off of Amazon. And you can see front and back, I used these things. These I also got on Amazon. Try to get to focus, yeah. Yep, they're super cheap. I think they're like 40 cents a piece. But these will cap off all your box tubing. It doesn't matter what wall thickness you use, this will still work for all of them. It just makes it look a lot better. It's also gonna keep you from cutting yourself on those. On the top, eventually, uh, I plan on putting some type of plywood or some type of skin just so I can set stuff on top of there. So I don't believe I'm gonna have my shelving go over the top of this. Yeah, and when once I do that, I'll probably anchor it to the wall too just to give it a little extra security. Because I mean, you can see it's, it's quite tall. Um, I ended up making it this tall just because I'm almost 6'3", so reaching it isn't a problem for me. And I'm not using drawer slides at all, so there's not going to be any weight hanging off the front. All the way it's just going to be centralized over the pads just because when you pull it out you're taking the weight off of it, you're not tipping it or anything. So I think it'll work pretty well. If you're going to use casters I wouldn't recommend doing it this tall just because it's going to be top heavy. But for my application this worked perfect. So if you have any questions just let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Here we are again. Another build has come to a close. If you guys are starting to notice a pattern in all the builds that I'm doing right now, it's because I'm just trying to make space for all the really cool stuff that I want to build. Right now, I'm just trying to make room, trying to get stay organized, um, get all the parts that I just have all over my garage consolidated into one area. So this build and then a couple more builds are going to be just organization based. So once that's done, I'm going to be doing some really cool builds like the board track racer. I know you guys are really going to love that one. So. Right now it might be a little tedious. I'm just trying to make use of my time and still give you guys good content because everything that I'm showing you, I haven't seen anyone else do exactly the way that I'm doing. I, t I do my own little spin on it. So if you guys like it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. I just wanna know what you guys think of all this. I'd also love to see your projects too. So if you wanna see behind the scenes stuff for this project and others, um, look me up on Instagram or Twitter. Both social networks are going to be Nate underscore Mainville. Um, get at me on there. You're going to see a lot of behind the scenes videos, uh, pictures, that kind of thing from both of these builds. So stay tuned. I really want to see what you guys are working on too. And I'll see you guys later.